The simplest way to extract information from a pandas data frame is by slicing rows, and we'll take a look at two different ways that we can accomplish this. The first method is based on two methods that we learned about earlier, the head and the tail method. The head method extracts the first several rows from the beginning of the data frame, and the tail method extracts a few rows from the end. Let's go ahead and load a data frame that contains information about women in development. I can see by looking at the table that the first part of the table contains information about particular countries, and the last part of the table contains information that summarizes the upper parts of the table. If I wanted to get only the summary information that's contained in the last 12 lines of the table, I can use the tail method to do this and assign the result of that tail method to a new named object. Recall that slicing operations like this do not result in a new copy of the object, rather they result in a view. So if I make changes to this newly named object, it will affect the original data frame as well. If I want to avoid this, I need to do the copy method, which I can stick on to the end of this expression here. So I've extracted only the information from the bottom of the table. If I want to get information from the top of the table, I can use the head method. And typically I would specify the number of rows that I wanted to include. In this case, we want to include everything except for the last 12 rows because those are the rows with the summary information. So if we wanted information only about countries, we would want to go from the beginning to 12 rows from the end. If I put in a negative number, I can do that. Let's try that. And we see we get countries from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. In earlier lessons, we've worked with loc and with iloc. We saw with data frames that we could use loc to pull a particular row out of the table by its label index, or iloc to pull a row out by its index number. When we were working with series, we saw that we could also use loc and iloc to specify a range of indices, and we can do that with data frames as well. The difference, though, is that instead of getting another series out like we did when we used these with series, when we do loc to specify a range of rows, the output object will be another data frame. Let's go ahead and try this with the range of rows that have labels from Ecuador to Ethiopia. I see that the result is a data frame and it's showing up here being displayed as a table. If I want to slice by integer index, I have to remember two things. One is that the beginning integer in the range that I specify counts from zero. So if I specify starting with item number one, I'm not going to get the first item. Instead, I am going to get the second item. The first item is Afghanistan, so this should start with Albania. The other thing to remember is that it does not go to the last number, but rather to one less than that. So if I specify one colon four, I'm going to get items one through three. And item number three would be zero, one, two, three, American Samoa. So this should produce Albania through American Samoa. Let's try it and see if that's what we get. And we do. As was the case with series, instead of specifying a range for loc or iloc, I can actually list the particular labels that I want to include. So if I have a list with these labels, I'm going to get the row about American Samoa the row about Puerto Rico, and the row about the U.S. Virgin Islands. And it will just pick those out of the entire data frame and create a new data frame from them like this. I can also specify just the beginning of a range. And if I do that, it will go all the way from the row that I specified to the end. 
Similarly, I can omit the beginning of the range and it'll go from the beginning to the range that I've specified. So this will go from the low income row to the end of the data frame.